The Surface Go is no iPad killer, but that's okay. It's still Microsoft's smallest and cheapest tablet yet, though the specs would make hardware nerds laugh. In many ways, it brings Microsoft closer to its original dream for the Surface line. It's as almost as light as an iPad, but it can also run most of the Windows apps you need. While the Surface Go certainly won't replace more powerful laptops, it's an intriguing option as a secondary device, especially at a low starting price of $399 without a keyboard. You just have to be aware of its limitations. For the most part, the Go is geared at someone looking for a new tablet or an inexpensive PC. Because, well, it's basically both. More so than any Surface before it, the Go feels like a tablet instead of a laptop. Its slightly curved edges make it comfortable in your hands, and it's light enough that I didn't mind holding it for hours as I read comics and caught up on my pocket queue. It easily fits into slim messenger bags and doesn't feel as burdensome as a typical ultra-portable laptop, or even the Surface Pro, which weighs 2.4 pounds with its type cover. Most importantly, it does all of this while still giving me access to everything Windows 10 offers. But like any ultra-slim machine, there are compromises. For one, the Go ships with Windows 10 S, which limits you to apps from the Microsoft Store. You can switch to unfettered Windows 10 Home for free, which I did for this review, but that's still an added layer of confusion. Plenty of people might be scared off by the warnings that appear the first time you try to install a third-party app while in S mode. It's understandable why Microsoft wants to control the app experience, since rogue software is a major reason why PCs start feeling sluggish over time, not to mention they could be a major security risk. But the restrictive approach is, let's say, unpalatable when the Microsoft Store is such a barren wasteland. There are a handful of popular services like iTunes, Spotify, and Netflix, but you won't find any major newspapers like the New York Times or apps that really take advantage of the tablet format. Instead, you'll find yourself spending more time browsing websites in Edge. And while it's nice to have a native web experience in a tablet, I long for apps optimized for slates, like you'd find on iOS and Android. We're used to tablets being consumption devices, and the Surface Go fails a bit in that respect, since Windows 10 isn't specifically geared towards slates. But on a rosier note, the Surface Go shines when it comes to being productive. Mostly, that's because Microsoft delivered another killer type cover. The smaller form factor takes a bit of getting used to, but it wasn't long before my fingers were flying across the keys. Touch typists will appreciate how Microsoft shrunk down the standard keyboard layout, and there's a slight curve along the keys to guide your fingers to them. I had no trouble writing most of this review and long articles on the Go's type cover. That's more than I can say for Apple's iPad Pro Smart Keyboard, which feels like you're typing on a soiled sponge. I was surprised that Microsoft was also able to fit in a large glass-covered trackpad and that it feels just as good as the Surface Pros. It's smoother and more responsive than most laptop touchpads I've used. If you haven't used the Surface Kickstand before, there's a slight learning curve, especially as you figure out how to balance it on your lap. But while it might take some finagling, I've learned to appreciate the flexibility. Sure, it's not as stable as a traditional laptop, but the Go's kickstand is far more functional than something like the iPad Pro's foldable keyboard cover, which only works on perfectly flat surfaces. Take any of Microsoft's previous surfaces, shrink it down a bit, and you've basically got the Surface Go. The silver magnesium case makes a return, and it feels as sturdy and polished as the Surface Pro. Nothing about the Go feels low end. The kickstand also got a big upgrade, now can open up a full 165 degrees. While it's the follow-up to the three-year-old Surface 3, the Go is even smaller and lighter at just 1.15 pounds. It also has a 10-inch screen compared to the Surface 3's 10.8-inch display. It's rare to see such an important spec get smaller in a sequel, but it's all in service of Microsoft's ultimate goal, making the Surface Go as portable as possible. Unfortunately, Microsoft didn't slim down the Go's bezels, which are just as chunky as the other Surface slates. They're helpful when holding it as a tablet, but it looks a little dated. Just like the last few models, the Surface Go has a pixel sense screen, meaning it's very thin and closely bonded to the glass. And it has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which is taller than widescreen displays. The Go features a unique 1800 by 1200 pixel resolution at 217 pixels per inch. And it's just as sharp as the Surface 3's slightly larger 1080p display. It's sharp enough for text and graphically rich images, and it's bright enough to use outdoors in sunlight. The new smaller type covers don't have as much key travel as Microsoft's other tablet keyboards, but there's still a decent amount of feedback. Sadly, they're still sold separately, $99 for the standard models and $129 for the slightly more premium Alcantara covered version. That's the same cloth-like material Microsoft used on the Surface laptop and some of its earlier keyboards. The Surface Go supports all of the other input options you'd expect, 10-point multi-touch as well as the new Surface Pen. As for cameras, there's a 5-megapixel front-facing shooter for video chatting as well as a Windows Hello camera for fast logins, and an 8-megapixel camera in the back. 
In addition to the standard surface charging connection, which is now accompanied by a smaller AC adapter, the Go also features a USB-C port, which can also power the tablet. We're finally beginning to see more USB-C devices and accessories on the market, so it's nice to see Microsoft embrace the new port. Microsoft also tucked a micro SDXC card reader underneath the Surface Go's kickstand, which lets you quickly add more storage. While I found myself more productive with the Surface Go than any other tablet, I still had to keep my expectations in check. It's limited by the dual-core Pentium Gold 4415Y CPU, a low-power 7th generation Intel processor. Microsoft claims it's around 30% faster than the Atom that was used in the Surface 3, and our benchmarks show it's a noticeable improvement. With our review model, the slightly souped-up $549 Surface Go with 8GB of RAM, I was able to juggle between multiple Chrome and Edge tabs, Evernote, Spotify, and Slack pretty easily. But the Pentium Gold CPU sometimes had trouble keeping up when I tried to load a complex web page with embedded video, or when OneDrive decided it needed to resynchronize all of my files. Basically, any task that's the least bit demanding would rocket my CPU usage up to 100%. With all of my apps open, I typically used around 70 to 80% of my 8GB of RAM. But the situation would certainly be worse on the entry level surface with 4GB of RAM. The thought of using a Windows 10 PC with so little memory actually makes me anxious. Eventually, I had to train myself not to think of the Surface Go as a full fledged PC but as a tablet that would occasionally open up Windows 10 applications when I needed them. In our battery test, which involves looping an HD video until the computer dies, the Surface Go clocked in at 9 hours and 50 minutes, well above Microsoft's 9 hour estimate. Of course, that figure will drop depending on what you're doing. With my usual workflow, it typically lasts around 6 hours before the battery completely drained. The Surface Go starts at $399 with the Pentium Gold CPU, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of eMMC storage. The step-up option, which we reviewed, goes for $549 with the same CPU, 8GB of RAM, and a 128GB SSD. Given that eMMC storage is notoriously slow and 4GB of RAM is practically useless, I'd recommend considering the more powerful model. And don't forget, you'll have to pay another $99 for the type cover, or $129 for the Alcantara version, and another $100 for the Surface Pen. Asus's Transformer Mini is similar to the Surface Go, and a better deal, starting at around $379 with a bundled keyboard and stylus. But it's just as underpowered as the Go, with an Atom X5 processor and 4GB of RAM. You can also nab Apple's latest iPad for $329 with 32GB of storage, or for $429 with 128GB. You'll have to add a third-party keyboard if you plan to type a lot though, which will usually run you around $100. On the Android front, there's Samsung's upcoming Galaxy Tab S4, a pricey $650 option, but one that has a gorgeous AMOLED screen and a bundled stylus. Even though the Surface Go is technically a PC, it's mainly competing with tablets. And just as you wouldn't want to replace your computer entirely with an iPad, you shouldn't think of the Go as your primary machine. Instead, it's more of a secondary device, one that you can carry around all day when you don't feel like lugging a larger laptop. I'll admit, the Surface Go is full of compromises. It's slow, and it's limited by Windows 10's slim tablet app selection. But it also has a keyboard that blows away any other tablet, and it can run normal Windows software when necessary. It's not meant for everyone, but if you're in the niche it's going for, it could be the ideal tiny Windows tablet.